Hello and welcome back to Laura Fenton Gaming Plays Divinity Original Sin 2 Definitive Edition. I'm your host, Laura Fenton Says Divinity Original Sin 2 Definitive Edition Guide. I'm going to get everybody an update on my party build. As always, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And do not forget that notification bell so will be updated more. Now, from the Reaper's Coast to the Nameless Island outside, this is how I survive with this uh, setup. I'm also going to give you some uh, items to uh, use for uh, trickery and uh, more during this uh, video. So let's go ahead and get to the uh, first one, my Death Knight aka Bait. Now let's go ahead and go over our uh, Death Knight aka Bait. He's our melee frontline fire with a two-handed weapon that's uh, very powerful so he'll focus more on strength gear, in other words heavy armor and a heavy uh, weapon. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over the uh, attributes first, yeah, or abilities I should say. Now, first of all, you want to do is when you uh, get your uh, Death Knight made, obviously you want to focus more on strength and then intelligence and then uh, memory. So I'll uh, go over each reason why for those stats. Now, strength is how hard you can hit with a melee weapon. More strength you had, more hard you can hit with a melee weapon. In my case, I have a nice two-handed sword. You should uh, definitely uh, look for that. So that's uh, very important to get strength up. At, in this case, during this point, it's maxed out. Afterwards, intelligence, uh, this is very important for uh, necromancy since I am uh, using uh, that. You uh, do damage based on uh, intelligence uh, abilities such as necromancy, hydro, etc. Pretty good idea to have that uh, second. Now, uh, my final advice is, is uh, once in a while you want to get memory up, just don't do it too much. Other than that, the Death Knight is uh, really useful for the uh, abilities I decided to give out. So what I'm going to do uh, next is uh, go over the skills. Now for this next section you want to definitely pick the skills for your uh, Death Knight. So uh, for example you want to definitely get Warfare, that's your uh, top priority. Try to max that out at this point in the uh, game. There's other skills you want to get too, including some points in Necromancy. Because that's going to start to uh, shine. So I'm going to go over each one of them I did at this point. Now Warfare, this was my uh, tops. I got the 10, that's your maximum. It does is uh, physical attacks, uh, more uh, points you put into it, more uh, damage you do with it. And there's some great warfare uh, stuff you could use in this uh, game. Really good stuff. And I'll uh, point that out later on for this uh, portion of the video. Now Scoundrel, I still kept it at 1. Again, Adrenaline, also uh, Vampiric Hunger. Those are two very important uh, skills you want to use. So yeah, definitely uh, keep that Scoundrel at 1 at all costs. Yeah, Adrenaline is too much uh, gold at this uh, point. So I'm going to go ahead and talk to you about the uh, next uh, one, which is Polymorph. I uh, put two points in that. I might drop one more point, then call it a day. Bull Rush is uh, really uh, great from the Polymorph tree. And I think there's something else that is uh, much better later on you could get. Hopefully in the next area, unless this is Endgame, then I'll uh, say just leave it at 2. Otherwise, just put one more point, then call it a day. So Necromancy, this is a very powerful spell tree. If you know how to use it right, you could be devastating. There are some great Necromancy skills lately I've been using. For example, Mosquito Swarm is uh, great. There's also a uh, Blood Rain, and there's also a Necromancy skill that uh, actually drain blood and heals you. And those are uh, good. Now, Arrow I did was uh, did that, but let's go ahead and talk about Hydro. Uh, Hydro, I kept it at this uh, point. Again, I used that only for uh, Vampiric Hunger, which was really great. And then also uh, for the Mage Armor. So yeah, you uh, definitely want to keep that one at least. If you get some items to uh, boost that, that's alright. Now Arrow, I uh, kept that too. Yeah, there's this one Uncanny Dodge. It's really great for this uh, setup. If I'm in trouble, I pop that. And then hopefully uh, my Necro stuff comes up and I can just heal myself afterwards. And uh, that should uh, about do it for the skill tree. So at this point, I'll probably say max out warfare ASAP, pick the other skills, and then work on necromancy uh, as soon as possible. So let's get to the next part. Now, really quick before I went to the talent tree, persuasion, uh, you want to get that high as possible on this character. He's going to be your leader. You're going to be talking a lot as this uh, character. Yeah, you want this character to be the talker. So this way, that character will actually be the one who will be targeted sometimes. Now, first of all, let's go ahead and talk about the talents. Execution. When you kill a foe, you gain two extra action points. Since you're on the front lines, you get lucky, especially against casters with no armor, and you just kill one. Well, guess what? You get to uh, have another uh, shot at attacking something else. This is very good. Now, Hothead. This one's great. 
long as you uh, keep your mage armor up and physical armor up, you'll uh, still do that constant damage. This is really great for uh, this uh, setup, and you should definitely have this uh, talent. So I'm going to go uh, down towards the uh, next one. Let me see on my uh, list. And if I remember right, yeah, this one's just for a human trait. Yeah, uh, if you start out as a human, you automatically get this. This is a nice setup for uh, humans since it gives you a uh, critical uh, chance. And you uh, definitely want critical chance if you're uh, definitely with this uh, setup. So let me uh, see what's uh, left, which is uh, living uh, armor. Let me uh, get down there. Okay, living armor this is very important. You get to... Uh, Drain uh, every attack you do get to add to your uh, magic armor. This is uh, very important now You couple that with a uh, vampiric hunger. Yeah, you're in serious business. So you combine those two together Yeah, you're rocking with this uh, setup now. I'm gonna go to the last one opportunist now This one's very important when enemies try to get away from you You have a free shot you hit them you could sometimes kill them especially enemies that are running away who cannot teleport This is extremely useful I'll go over it again with uh, Sibyl later on in this uh, video. Other than that, I think that should be it for all the uh, talents. So let me uh, go to the next portion of this uh, build video. Now, next up is your uh, skill book, aka your uh, spell book that you should have for the falling skills for this Death Knight slash uh, bait build part of the uh, party video. And I have a few of them, so I'm going to just go ahead and point out the ones I use, plan to use in the future. Or at some point during Reaper's Coast or the Nameless Island outside that I definitely use. So let's uh, go ahead and do uh, this one. This one's going to be a lot to talk about because this guy has a lot of tools in the tool shed. First of all, Battering Ram. Uh, when you uh, do a Battering Ram, you take out your foe's armor. You could not only do damage, but you could also knock them down. This is a great crowd control uh, ability to use. I have uh, two of them on my uh, bait character. Eventually, I'll switch it out from one of them, but this is uh, very nice to uh, use. It also controls the tide. Battle Stump, uh, it's, a, it's like Battling Ram, except for differences. It just uh, draws out a wave of uh, damage towards a foe in the direction that you uh, point to. Now, if they have no armor, you can knock them down, plus it clears out certain uh, areas. This is a very nice setup I have, too. Again, great crowd control. Really useful to uh, have. Now, uh, this one, Blitz Attack. You jump around two foes. You do damage. Uh, which is uh, fine. This is a great way to actually uh, teleport to one foe, jump to another. If two of them are together, yeah, you can set yourself up for a nice whirlwind attack. So this is a great way to actually uh, jump into the thick of things without using the Phoenix Dive. Now, Enrage, uh, this one's really nice. Uh, target ally gets uh, buffed up. He loses some uh, debuffs, etc. He also gets muted, so you just got to be careful on that. I only use this on certain situations. And yeah, just uh, use that only on certain situations. There are some that will arise from time to time, especially in Reaper's Coast. Now, Whirlwind, you do uh, X amount of physical damage depending on your uh, strength bonus, which is uh, really nice. Now, this is a great ability. You have foes surrounding you. You swing that. You can do some damage. You can even kill one or two. If you kill a foe, especially if you have that Executioner, you get a free action points. So that's a good setup. Now, Challenge, this is a great... You, uh, you do is you uh, challenge a foe. You have two rounds to kill that foe. If you do not, the foe gets your bonus. The uh, bonus is that uh, you get healed up if you kill the foe. And uh, if not, you take damage. And then the foe gets healed up. So this is a great way to finish off a foe. Hit challenge. And hopefully you finish them off in two rounds. Now, Phoenix Dive. This is uh, really good. You can teleport around the battlefield or even around the uh, map. Bad news is it leads like a fire trail. Great news is you teleport around. It gets you in the thick of things if you need to. Just be careful where to teleport, especially if you teleport in poison. Yeah, you could damage yourself with that. So just remember that. Now, uh, next one is provoke. That's like a taunt. Uh, and you just hit provoke, get an enemy to attack you. This is uh, really useful. For example, if an enemy's attacking, say, Loche, you hit that. Hopefully, it does not uh, re get resisted. And then that foe will attack you. So use that to actually uh, in certain situations. I did that a few times. Adrenaline, this is very useful. You pop this, you get two extra action points. Now, you lose two the next round. This is a great way to use other abilities. Extremely useful. I advise heavily using this. In fact, no uh, frontline fire should be without it, or no rogue should not be without it. That's why I put that one point in Scoundrel. Now, Vampiric Hunger, for two rounds, you get life stealing. This is extremely helpful. So, when you attack a foe with this ability on, you get some life back. 
And uh, of course, this is like really powerful. You should definitely use this no matter what. I usually uh, pop this first and go ahead and go attack a foe. Now, uh, this uh, next one, Armor of Frost, adds more magic armor. If I'm going to be fighting, say, mages or uh, casters, I pop this uh, baby, go ham on them, and it'll help me against their uh, magic attacks. Now, uh, uh, Loche has a more powerful version, but me, I have a good version, which is good enough. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do, do Uncanny Dodge. This will give you a 90% dodge. This is really useful in case you're in deep trouble. You pop this on yourself. And then hopefully by the next round, you get to do something else just to uh, get yourself out of uh, danger. I advise definitely using it. Now, uh, Blast, this is really useful. You can uh, remove a certain thing that helps out foes. Or if there's like something that's bad on you, you can pop that for yourself. Extremely useful. Everyone in your party should have it, especially someone like Loesch in the uh, who's a caster. So yeah, I would probably say in certain, certain uh, situations, use it. Now, uh, this one is uh, very useful. What it does is it uh, sucks the blood around you. You get healed up. More blood, more uh, vitality to get healed. This is a very nice necromancy ability. I start testing this out. And let me tell you, sometimes when there's a lot of blood, you heal up. So I'll probably start using that more often. And now uh, this one, Bone Cage. For every uh, bodies you see, you get physical and uh, armor and uh, more. So, more bodies around you, more you use this. Now, I used this on uh, Blood Moon Island, and just say, the bonus stuff just kept on coming. And then think about, I used it, boom. And now, uh, this one, uh, Bullhorn, what it does is gives you a nice uh, charge attack. You could charge around the battlefield. Uh, good news is that charge will uh, keep on going uh, per round. You use it once per round until the uh, Bullhorns wears out. Extremely useful. You should definitely use this. And I mean, I'm still using it now. Let's see what else is uh, there. Now, uh, Mosquito Swarm, what this does is it uh, restores vitality for X amount of hit points, depending on your uh, stats you uh, gain from it. Also, it's uh, resisted by physical armor. If a foe does not have any physical armor, you could do some nasty stuff to him. I would say I start using it, it's great. Now, Rain Blood, this is really useful. It causes blood on the battlefield you couple it with that one uh, necromancy ability where you heal from uh, pools of blood around you yeah this is uh, great also it sets bleeding too if uh, certain folks have zero physical armor extremely useful now this one right here this uh, summon I only use for the uh, driftwood arena blindfold edition you kill a foe then you uh, summon a corpse from it this will help you out big time just remember that now, this is since I have a custom character, this uh, protection barrier thing. What it does is you drop it down, you get restored physical armor and magical armor. And it's great. Just uh, hover everybody around it, drop the sucker, they'll get healed up nicely. Now, look for uh, two-handed weapons with all-in. You do a whole bunch of damage with it. I mean, you pop adrenaline, you pop this right here, and you can possibly kill foes, especially if they're uh, low on health. So... This is an extreme useful ability. I mean, this will help you out big time during the course of this game. Other than that, that's about it for the uh, skill tree and more for my Death Knight. So I'm going to go ahead and do the demonstration portion for this uh, character. And here we go. So now I'm with my uh, Death Knight. During the first round, you want to make sure you get an at least the uh, Vampire Conger at any point. Uh, so I do the Blitz to uh, jump on in against the Shadow Prince. If he was alone, yeah, see the damage I did. I had help with Sibyl to uh, weaken him too. I did adrenaline. Yep. Now I'm going to attempt to finish him off with my uh, all in. Yeah. I'm going to do some damage. Not enough to kill him, but it's enough to uh, weaken him. Either to fire or Sibyl's going to definitely uh, do it. I'm popping Vampiric Hunger right now because later on in the rounds, yeah, I'm going to start to do some life draining. So I skipped ahead towards uh, later on in the uh, rounds. I still have Vampiric Hunger. I'm going to go ahead and do Whirlwind. Yep. I um, took out most of their armor, which is uh, great. Now I'm set my uh, character up for a uh, battering ram. So let me uh, go ahead and pop that uh, sucker. Find where that's at. Yeah, let's uh, do it. And uh, one of them's going to get knocked down. See, we knocked one down already. Now I'm about to finish both of them off. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this one off by doing the blitz attack. So let me hit that. Yeah, I did that. Let me go ahead and do the this one. When I do this ability, yeah. 
right there i finished one one off i got a free turn i'm about to finish another one off and there you go now next up is losha she's the master of hydro spells water healing can use healing as a weapon so I, i'm going to do right now is go ahead and go over her uh attributes yeah so there's only two of them you should definitely focus on with a little bit of memory as uh, number three, you should definitely focus on intelligence, max that out ASAP. Then go for uh, wits, and once in a while, put like one or two points into uh, memory. So I'm going to go over each one. Intelligence, uh, this will, uh, more intelligence you have, more intelligence based attacks gets increased. Now Losha is using uh, the uh, water slash ice uh, spells, or I should say... Uh, Abilities, yeah, that'll, that'll be really useful for uh, that. So just remember to bump up the intelligence as high as possible. Get it maxed out, which it is at this point. Now, Wits will give you uh, critical hits. Also, Initiative. So this is the second one I decided to attempt to uh, max out. Try to get much of it as possible, especially Initiative. So this way, Losha will get more of that, and she'll get more chance of uh, going first, too. So another thing is I'm going to talk about uh, this section one more time. Yeah, memory two, that should be number three. Just put that in between a few levels. Don't do it all the time. Now, next one is the combat uh, abilities, aka skills you uh, definitely want. Obviously, you want hydro up. Yeah, hydro is the first thing you want to max out. Put a point in warfare. You're going to need that later on for a certain talent. And uh, there's also other ones too I'll point out, including dual wielding. Yeah, we're dual wielding wands with this character. And let me tell you, that gets really useful in some uh, instances. Especially if uh, her uh, water spells don't work, I just put on a fire wand and I go to uh, town. So first of all, let's talk about warfare. I put one point into that. You see, you need, need that for a certain talent. That's why I did it. After that, don't do anything else to it. Just one point is definitely enough. Seriously. One point's enough. So let me see what else I am going to talk about. Nope, nope. I'm going to try to go there. Not pyro. Nope, we're not going to make a pyro. Uh, hydro. Yeah, this one. This one is your bread and butter. Maxes out to 10 ASAP. You get this to 10, you get the cat's most powerful water slash ice slash healing magic in the entire game. Let me tell you, that's really useful. And yes, you can use healing as a weapon against the undead. I'll point that out. Huntsman, I uh, put a few points there for uh, one reason. There's a skill you want to use in your skill book to escape. Yeah, that's why I did it. Put two points into that, Leasley, then use that skill to escape. That's why I did it. And I stopped there. Stop at two, everyone. Seriously, stop at two. Now, Geo, I uh, put one there for the uh, physical armor buff. And I'm going to say this right now. I used that on my main guy. Pop that on him or Losha if she loses any uh, physical armor really useful so definitely uh, put one point into that i almost decided to go for uh, that next but i said nah i think that's enough arrow that one's uh really good i put one point into that for uh now then use items to uh, buff it up i'm gonna say it, it's helpful i definitely put uncanny dodge in uh on my on this uh, character too she's like a backup person to cast that and uh that's about it for the uh, arrow one so the uh, next one is dual wielding yeah, I'm doing welding wands. You'll want that. I put it at this point. I might put more points into it after uh, it's said and done. I'll probably uh, try to get that much as possible. If that gets to uh, 10, then I'll uh, probably start the Geo tree or the uh, other ones. So in all, that's it for your uh, character's uh, ability slash skills you want to put into. Hydro you want to get first. Now for uh, Losha, what I did was is I kept her uh, lore master. She started out with it with this uh, setup when you picked that, her uh, certain template at the start of the uh, game. She could identify items. Yeah, she's my item identifier. So yeah, that's why I uh, picked that one. So yeah, you uh, definitely want uh, one character in your party to be item identifier, someone to pick locks, and uh, someone to be your persuader at least. And if in, in the fans case, a lucky charm person is helpful too. Now, I am at the talent portion of this uh, video for Losha. Yeah, we're uh, there. So here's the thing. She has some great talents. It's very helpful. And, of course, some of those, uh, what do you call it, abilities slash skills I picked helped out greatly for at least one of the talents. So I'm going to go over every single one and give you all my uh, thoughts about it. 
and it's uh, best to her ability too. So let's uh, do it. Now Executioner, it does is when you kill a foe, you gain two extra action points. It happens only once per uh, turn. This is really useful, especially she kills him with magic, especially those ice spells. So I put uh, Warfare 1. That's very important. Do Warfare 1, then you uh, go ahead and pop this baby there when you see it available. Extremely useful. Far out, man. This will allow you to cast further on your spells. Extremely useful, especially if she's like very far and she's far enough away to be safely casting spells. This is extremely helpful. It's great for if and too. I'll explain more on his, but Losha, you definitely want to get this one. So let me go ahead and do the next one. Hot head, uh, more uh, maximum health you have. Of course, you uh, do more damage, which is a great 10% crit chance. And I'm going to say this right now. Extremely useful as long as Losha does not lose vitality. She does some extra damage. You uh, definitely uh, want that. Yeah, you uh, definitely want that. Now this one she already has because she's a human. And uh, humans give you a, a critical chance increase. And a critical multiplier. This is uh, really helpful since she's already a human like I said before. And I'm going to say it. You should definitely get it if you're playing a human character. Like my main guy. So let me uh, go ahead and do the uh, last one. Now uh, this one's uh, really good because it gives you a boost in magical skills. Since you speak uh, casting spells all the time. Yeah, guess what? This will help her out big time. You should definitely get this one as soon as you uh, can. I got probably, I'll probably say either one third or almost halfway through Reaper's Coast. Other than that, Losha's great. So let's go ahead and talk about her spell book, aka skills. Now we're at her uh, skill book, aka spells too, if you want to call it that. And I'm going to tell you right now, Losha has some, has some very nice tools. Some of them I uh, was caught off by surprise in a very good way. Others, I knew they were uh, better as I went uh, along through the uh, game. Now, Tactical Retreat. That's why I put points in Huntsman. And let me tell you this right now. This is an escape spell. You escape from uh, melee foes far away or set yourself up in a nice high position. Yeah. Height in this game gives you more damage. Higher you are, more damage you could do. And let me uh, tell you, it's really great. Armor of Frost. Uh, this will uh, give a certain character X amount of magical armor. Since she has uh, 10 in Hydro Plus, let me tell you this now. Extremely useful. You cast this on bait too. It'll be helpful in that end. So uh, you definitely want this uh, as soon as possible. It was really useful during Reaper's Ghost. I'll tell you all that. Hell Strike. This one's very powerful attack spell. Now, if uh, foes have zero magical armor, guess what? They can become frozen. That's like crowd control. You definitely want to uh, use that. And I'm going to tell you this. I use this quite a bit along with the other damaging spells. Now, Rain, uh, this one will also, uh, when you hit Rain on the battlefield, cast that first, then cast like an ice spell. You do more damage with Rain on there, so uh, keep that in mind. Also, if foe's chilling, you cast Rain. Very good chance they'll be frozen. That is extremely useful, so it's like a nice combination to have. So let me go ahead and do uh, this one. This is a healing spell. It not only heals you, it heals your other characters too. This could be used as a weapon against the undead. You cast a healing spell on undead, they take damage. And uh, for X amount of round, you cast this on undead, they take damage. I'm going to say that twice, so remember that. Cast that sucker, if you find the undead. Now, this one, Ice Fan, this one's really good. Just uh, cast it, you do a whole bunch of uh, damage. This is great with uh, rain too, so uh, keep that in mind if you want to start using combinations like that. It costs three, but it is really helpful to turn the tide your way. So remember that. Now, uh, Soothing Cold, uh, it does is it gives you magical armor around you and your friends in a radius. Let me tell you, this is extremely useful. There's a few certain points in the game, especially at Reaper's Coast, at the uh, hanging area. Yeah, I popped this sucker, and let me tell you right now. It helped me got through this uh, battle really well. So you definitely want to keep that. Now, Winter Blast, this will do a uh, large damage. Now, you couple that with Rain. Yeah, that damage increases. And if there's a foe with, say, we, with, I'd uh, probably say about that amount damage of uh, magical armor, you could get rid of that magical armor, get them frozen, and then your friends could beat the living crap out of that foe you just frozen up. Really useful. Now, uh, Cryogenic uh, Stasis, this is really helpful. There are certain NPCs in the game that you have to protect that will love to run away or do their own thing. You pop this sucker on there and they won't do that. 
it's really helpful, especially in the hanging area. I'm going to demonstrate during the course of this uh, video. So let me get this next one, Global Cooling. It does uh, water damage around you. It's really helpful. Again, if a foe's uh, magical armor is gone, you can freeze them on the spot near you. Then you can use Tactical Retreat to get away. So remember that combination setup. Now let me uh, go ahead and talk about the next one. Also how to weaponize it. Now uh, this uh, healing spell heals you and your friends around you. Now if you're going to want to point that against an undead, uh, do so. They'll uh, take damage. Really useful in either way. And I'm going to tell you this now. This was a lifesaver spell. If you get your hands on this, go ahead and use it. It's uh, great. Now uh, uncanny uh, evasion is just like the bait version. About the same. You pop that on someone, they get 90% dodge. Really helpful for someone in trouble. Like for example, Sibyl. Like she always gets into trouble. I definitely want to use that. So let me see what else is there on the list. Oh yeah, Fortify. This gives you physical armor. I have Losha 1 with Geo. So I can pop down someone from a long distance or herself. In case the melee guy just went too up close and personal. It also cures so many things too, including decaying. Which is great though. So keep that in mind. Also had Losh for uh, Bless, but I said nah. And uh, this one's good, Streaming Lance. If you want to go ahead and use the source points, you point this in a direction, you your friends get healed. Just be careful not to point near uh, living foes. If it's undead, yeah. Go ahead and blast them with it. Uh, they'll uh, love you for it. Well, actually, they'll take damage, but you'll love to uh, do it. Other than that, uh, i probably say it's the last thing I learned. So I'm going to get to the next portion. Just go ahead and demonstrate her uh, tools that i just shown you all. And here we go. Now, I'm uh, playing as Losha. I'm at the infamous uh, hanging area where this one guy runs away. First thing I want to do is put this guy in cryo. Very useful also for companions who need to get healed up. So they don't move around. There you go. He won't take any magical damage at least. Second, I'm just doing soothing cold. So this way everybody gets their magical arm regenerated for a certain amount of rounds. Which is very good. Second, I'm uh, about to do is cast rain. Yeah. This way I have a nice damage boost for uh, water spells slash ice spells, which is uh, good. So now next thing I'm going to set up for this portion of uh, the demonstration is to freeze my uh, foes. Yep. I'm going to try to attempt to uh, freeze both of them. This is like crowd control, but really useful. So uh, keep that in mind. And you just got to be careful on how to aim so you don't hit your other characters. You do not want that at all, especially on tactician difficulty or honor mode. And we froze one up, so the other one's about to be frozen, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and cast this spell to freeze the area around me. And there you go. I just did it because the uh, rain helped. And uh, that should uh, do it for uh, this uh, round. I'm going to go ahead and get to the next round. And I'm going to show you how to finish off certain foes. So after a certain point, yeah, we're, uh, we're about to go ahead and kill some many foes. So we're going to go ahead and use one of our attack uh, damages. This one's about to die. We're about to get some extra attacks. See, we got uh, two free action skills, which is two. So I'm going to go ahead and cast uh, this one spell that does three uh, attacks on the direction I'm pointing to. And uh, that should do it for a demonstration. And yep, we attack them. And there you go. And that's how Losha works. So the next one up I'm going to demonstrate is Ifan. Next up is our ranger slash summoner if and he is really deadly with range powerful with summons yeah the summoning tree did surprise me big time there are some great summoning uh, skills you want definitely want to get in your uh, book I'll show you all that later on he still wears Larry still uses a crossbow over a bow unless the bow of course has more uh, attack damage then I'll switch to that but I'm going to say this right now let's go ahead and do the uh, his abilities First of all, Finesse. You definitely want to max this out now. Yeah, it's a very good skill. It's great with range damage, also great with daggers. For Ifan's case, it is wonderful. I used uh, a lot of Finesse stuff, especially Finesse armor. Yeah, the uh, layer armor is all Finesse. Now, Wits, after I uh, max out Finesse, I'll do Wits. Will give me more of a critical chance and initiative, and I want that initiative because later on in the game, Foes with higher initiative than us will most likely wipe us out. We have higher initiative. At least we will uh, do something about it. I uh, also put like one, two points in the memory, which is very good. So I have a little bit more tools in the tool shed. Now next up is a uh, combat ability slash skills you want to use. 
I'm gonna say this right now. I uh, picked some of them, but my main focus is Huntsman and Summoning. And I'm gonna try to rush Summoning to uh, 10 so I don't have to worry about using items to uh, boost that up. So I'm gonna go over uh, those. Now, Warfare, I uh, put it at uh, 5 and kept it there. So this way, my, I, my physical damage will be much higher. You know, I definitely want to stop this at 5. Just uh, trust me on that. So, uh, I'm going to do uh, next is uh, go ahead and talk about summoning. While well, I'm just showing the Warfare thing real quick for one last uh, time. Summoning, this is uh, very powerful. There's some great summoning stuff. If your encampment is, uh, is uh, being summoned at 10, it'll grow up big and does big damage. Also, Charm's useful. Soulmate is uh, great. It's a surprising tree. I abused it a lot lately, especially uh, against the undead. Now, Pyro kept at 1. That's how he started. Huntsman, you want to do is uh, max this out to uh, 10 seconds. Right now, it's at a good base 6. So once the summoning tree is done, I just go ahead and max that out. You're saying, why not range attack? Well, Huntsman gives you a nice, uh, better damage output. So... Yeah, you get that, and then if, uh, if there's any excess points you uh, definitely want to do is uh, aim for that. Now, I'm doing right now is just demonstrating later on for the arrows, why they're useful. And the next thing I did was is for the uh, civil civic abilities was Lucky Charm. You're asking why is that? You see, if fans start out with Lucky Charm, he's my guy to find some uh, extra loot. You may never know, you might find a nice uh, crossbow for him, dagger for Sibyl, or a nice piece of heavy armor for uh, bait. Yeah, seriously. So you uh, definitely want that at five. So I'm gonna do uh, next part is talk about the talents. So let me uh, go ahead and demonstrate those. Some of those are uh, similar to uh, Losha. Some of them are uh, not. So uh, let me uh, go ahead and go over each and every one of them. And I'll also uh, go ahead and talk about the uh, first one which will be arrow recovery. So anytime we shoot those special arrows, there's a certain chance that you uh, will not use one. So for example, if I shoot those uh, curse fire arrows, then of course, if they're at four, I have a good chance they'll stay at four. So uh, keep this in mind, especially if you're using those knockdown arrows, which by the way, they're really useful and helpful too for if fan. Executioner, this one's great. That's why I have Warfare at least at one. When you kill an enemy, you gain two action points back. That's basically a free attack for if fan. I'm going to tell you this right now. Extremely useful. I use this quite a bit. Help me out big time. Just let me tell you all this. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the next one. Is our is a Fall Out Man. This one's great. It gives you more range, especially for if fan. Losha has it already. If fan's a range user using his uh, bow or a uh, crossbow. It helps out big time, and if I'm especially at a higher ground shooting uh, things down from a far distance that's uh, at my range, yeah, that damage grows. Now, this one right here is for humans. He's a human. He has a bonus in a critical chance and a nice uh, critical multiplier, and this is a nice advantage for humans. That's why I uh, love it. Now, for this last one's optional, but I uh, picked it first. And let me tell you right now for this next one, Pet Pal, Reaper's Coast has tons of animals. You get a whole bunch of quests from them, so this is extremely useful. You should take this one early on. If you just took it on on Reaper's Coast, you miss a lot, a whole bunch of other things at Fort Joy. So yeah, this is really helpful. I didn't do Spire's Kiss. That's a, a side quest a talent you get. Thirdly, that was useless. So for the next part of this uh, demonstration. I'm going to show us the skill book. Now, we're at the next portion of this video, the spell book. I'm going to tell you right now, if fan has some wonderful spells, and I'm going to say this, the hero are great. Well, spell skills. First of all, first aid. This is like a nice healing spell. Cures some things, too. Really helpful. For example, if Losha's healing is uh, on cooldown, pop this sucker. If fan will be a nice backup healer. It's just his only healing ability, so uh, keep this in mind. Well, besides potions, but still. Really good to have. So, Ricochet, you hit one foe, then you hit another foe. It goes up to, I believe it's uh, two to three foes. Really useful for a group of enemies if you want to try to get their physical armor down. So, uh, definitely you want to use this one. I actually uh, use this quite a bit on some uh, instances. If you saw my Let's Play series, yeah. Now, uh, this uh, next one... This uh, shot 
it does is further away from your foes, the more damage you do. Let me tell you this right now. During the Harbinger of Doom, yeah, just say if Fan was a DPS monster. And if you're very high at a certain place, really helpful. Now, uh, this one, this uh, Fang Shot, it goes through armor. Uh, foes will take piercing damage. So uh, this damage is based on finesse. So if you have more uh, finesse, just say if you max that out, yeah, it fans a monster. Especially with this. I call this a uh, daybreaker for uh, someone's uh, good day to gone bad. Now, Sky Shot, I was surprised at this recently. I tested it out. You'll see in a bit. Really helpful. This is great if you're on the high ground. You jump up a little bit high. You do a bunch of damage. Great way to uh, get some DPS going. If the uh, ballistic shot is on cooldown, go ahead and pop that. Tackle retreat. Someone gets too close, you move away. You want to get to a higher ground, you move up. Really helpful to have, seriously. And I love using it. Now, there might be some fire stuff. I'll only point out one or two of them next. So I'm going to see uh, which one there is. Haste, this is really useful. Pop this on someone, they get uh, more AP per turn. Also, uh, cure some uh, bad things. I used this for a few instances. It was really helpful, and I turned the tide for uh, some of those uh, fights. So that was a very good uh, one to uh, have for a while. So I'm going to go ahead and get to the next one. Now, Searing Daggers. I love using these because sometimes it starts out with uh, fire fights, in case you want to use fire on someone, or explosive barrels. Also, it's very useful for dropping this down if you run out of fire arrows. Put your summon on the fire, and you have a summon fire, which is great. Uh, let's see, next up, this uh, conjuring little creature. Now, this creature, when it's small, is not that great during Reaper's Coast, but if you get it to 10, and then uh, when you summon it, it grows up to a big old meanie. You definitely want necro fire with that, fire, ice, blood, any of those, uh, those I just said, as a powerful summon. Now, this one right here is like your charm spell. If a foe's uh, magical armor is gone, use it. This is especially useful against uh, pure muley foes who have zero magical armor. You pop that, they'll join your party, attack their buddies, and it's good times. I really use this on some situations. Now, the tome I use at the start of Reaper's Coast, it's uh, useful when you begin there. Up to the halfway point, then I start using less and less. Eventually, one day, I will replace the uh, tome for uh, something better, but it's great to have when you start out at Reaper's Coast. Help me out at Fort Joy uh, big time. Also, it was used as a bait for Emni to attack. Now, this one right here infuses magical armor on your little summon. Also gives uh, magical abilities. This is, like, really uh, great to use. I would definitely uh, advise using it. So, you summon a little summon on a pool of blood. Then you uh, cast that for the magical armor bonus. And some other magical bonus stuff, which is uh, good. This one is the physical version. Same thing as the magical version. Cast on a little uh, sucker. He gains some nice abilities. And he could go to town. I really love that one. So let me uh, go ahead and uh, let's show you all that for a few more seconds. And I'm going to show you the next one that I uh, discover is extremely helpful. Especially with healing potions. I'll explain. Soulmate! You use this on the undead, especially Alice. Then get those uh, giant healing potions, drink two of them. You just turn a battle that lasts 5 to 10 minutes, maybe more, or you do in kiting, into uh, less than a round. You definitely want to use this to kill hard undead. It has a cooldown 5, that's the downside. Here's the upside. You could use undead, drink, and that's all. Drink as in healing potions. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, point to the next one I felt like is really useful that it fan has. I'm going to say this right now. I use them in uh, some instances. It's summon a wolf. Let me tell you this right now. If my incant was on cooldown, I pop this sucker. Use it as a bait. So this way my bait guy could do something else. And I'm going to say this for an instance. I used this during the scarecrow fight. And also during the uh, abomination. Help me out big time in those uh, fights. If you want it. So other than that, if it had some great trees and some great surprises. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to do demonstrations. I'm going to demonstrate the hanging area for Ifan. Also, I'm going to demonstrate the Alice one. But one more time, I'm going to go ahead and summon Incant with uh, Cursed Fire to show you how powerful it is. Big Guy has Cursed Fire and it's really useful. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate right now the two uh, fights. 
now I am at the demonstration portion of this uh, video so let me go ahead and explain on how this does uh, work first of all I'm doing is casting a uh, ice arrow also creates a nice surface you want to do that on uh, certain parts of this uh, reaper's coast so this way you're still gonna become more powerful there some now is ice which is really uh, good and I am gonna do is just use that as bait to attack unfortunately it's gonna die when this big blob moves so I'm skip ahead towards using uh, if fans abilities I'm using sky shot to uh, finish it off since I'm very high he'll jump up for more height and damage there you go once down because I have executioner I got a free turn unfortunately uh, I'm not gonna use it against the magister has too much armor however that blob nearby look like it's trouble there you go I use the uh, other one the ballistic shot it's about to die use the fang to finish it off and that's all she wrote for Ifan's uh, range ability. So I skipped ahead towards the soulmate one where we're going to drink ourselves to uh, life and Alice to death. So we're going to cast that on Alice. She's undead. So where we do to each other, it's going to be linked the same. Now she's undead. I'm living. I have healing potions. So we're going to go ahead and drink. So the first drink we're going to do is just uh, drink up. Just showing you all the hit points. One drink down since it's a giant one. And one more to go. And she's toast. You just turn a very hard battle with if and and uh, summoning with the uh, soulmate into a very easy fight. So let's go do Sibyl. Now, next up is the assassin Sibyl. You heard me right. She's our assassin. Gets behind foes, stab them. She uses leather armor. Finesse is her uh, main attribute to increase. She has twin daggers. She's really deadly. She was deadly at Fort Joy. She's extremely deadly in the Reaper's Coast and the Nameless Island. Nothing stops her there. So I'm going to go ahead and go over her attributes. Now Finesse, uh, this will uh, increase damage with Finesse weapons. For example, those two daggers. You definitely want to now at this point try to max it out. Yeah, just get that up to the maximum amount. So this way you just shred things into pieces. And besides, she'll wear the best uh, finesse armor in the uh, game. You want that too. Now, with increase your, your critical chance initiative. Yeah, initiative is very useful. That's the second thing you want to do, definitely. And I'm going to say this right now. She is really deadly when she does a critical hit, especially when she backstabs. And in fact, some of the encounters I did with her with her backstabbing made things a lot more easier. Memory's third, if you could spare the points. That's all right. So the next portion of the uh, video, I'm going to demonstrate. I'm just going to tell everybody right now, it's her uh, combat abilities, aka skills. There's not much to pick from, so I'm just going to explain it best as uh, possible. And I'm going to go over some of them now. Uh, warfare, I maxed that out at uh, 10. This does uh, physical damage. In Sibyl's case, that's really useful. Some some people say, why not some magical stuff? Well, the thing is, um. Get my Death Knight some magical stuff with Necromancy. This one's all physical. And her backstabs are really great if you know what you're uh, doing. Scoundrel, I uh, did was I kept it at 5. So this way she used her uh, Scoundrel abilities. Her critical multipliers are uh, good. And her movement speed's great. So in other words, she'll move around the uh, map much uh, better. And I'm going to see what else is there. Well, I'm leaving Scoundrel there. So we got Scoundrel uh, next, uh, before. So we're going to do dual wielding. After you do Warfare, max out dual wielding. This will increase your damage as long as you're dual wielding uh, daggers. And also uh, dodge too. So this way she dodges more often. Where With this setup, she is really deadly with those two knives. I'll tell you all this. And besides, the only way to backstab is two knives. Now as for her uh, civic abilities or civil. Yeah, thievery I decided to uh, do. So this way she opens up more chests. She'll just unlock them. Really useful over a uh, stealth thing. Stealth thing's all right, but nine out of ten times you're just going to start the battle anyways without stealth. And besides, you have one person talk, and the other three just go on ahead and just set things up. You really don't need stealth at this point. You just already set your characters up to uh, win. So let me uh, go ahead and uh, do the uh, next section, which will be the talent section of this uh, video. So I'm going to leave this there for a few more seconds for people to see. There you go. Now, next up is Sibyl's talents. Now, uh, please note I didn't do the pawn at all. All that was is uh, you get one free AP movement, which is uh, very good. 
So I uh, explained that last time. It's still great to have Sibyl to get that. Now, essential knowledge, that's Elven. It's a pretty useful conversation. Now, Corpse Eater, this is another Elven ability. Eat a corpse, you learn something. You can also uh, get some information from certain court pieces. Do not eat certain ones like, for example, if you kill the Shallow Man or Alexander. Yeah, don't eat those. You'll mess up the uh, story quest for those. Now, next up is uh, Hot Head. This one's really good, full vitality. You do uh, a little bit more critical hits, which is really nice. Now, Sibyl starts out first usually in combat. She does max damage, which is uh, good. So uh, you definitely want to get that, and it's really helpful. And I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, next one, which is Opportunist. Anytime when a foe moves away, Sibyl attacks him, just like uh, my uh, Fenton guy. Yeah, she does the same thing. And if they're running from her backside, yeah, that probably counts as a backstab too. So it's really useful. I killed a few people with uh, Sibyl's twin daggers this way. Very entertaining, by the way. Now, uh, next one is uh, Parry Master, 10% dodge while you're uh, dual wielding. We're dual wielding dagger. It's really good, really helpful, and it's really uh, powerful. Now, some of the other ones I uh, pointed out are uh, not that useful uh, down the line next, but still, that's uh, great to uh, have. I'm not going to do is the uh, rooted one. That's story related. So, now for the next part is the uh, skill book, aka okay, your spells. So Bill has some useful ones, and I'm going to say this right now, that's basically the uh, same. It's just the only difference is I just added a few in the uh, spell books. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, begin. Now this one's very useful. When uh, Sibyl gets rid of certain foes' physical armor, she can use it to knock them down, which is really good. It's like crowd control. Fenton, Fenton's uh, used his his. Can't use it anymore for, you for a few rounds. So Bill could use hers then. Just to keep that crowd control uh, going, especially against tough foes. So next up is uh, Whirlwind. This is a uh, really uh, great surrounds foes. And if my memory serves me right, backstab does work with that too. So if you sneak up behind a few foes, swing your weapon. Yeah, uh, bad things happen to them. Good things happen to you too. So I'm gonna go ahead and explain the next one. Adrenaline. You gain two free action points. You lose two the next round. Extremely useful. Let me explain why. Now you couple it with uh, Sibyl's own uh, elven ability, which gains one action point. She has a full action bar. She can attack all she wants, all day long, all night long. And it's like very devastating. Yeah. Flesh sacrifice. You combine those two together, you rip a uh, foes a new one. Now this one's uh, good too. You could get uh, someone from behind, teleport to them. You do backstab damage when you use this ability. This one's really great. This starts out the battles really well. It usually goes your way if you give a critical hit, especially against casters. Really helpful. Now, uh, this next ability, after I show this one for a few more uh, seconds, this one's uh, really great. Chloroform. If uh, any foes does not have any uh, magical armor, you can put them to sleep. This is uh, great for magical damage, too. I use this for a few uh, times, especially for crowd control. Throwing knives were uh, great at the start of uh, Fort Joy and also a little bit of Reaper's Coast. Throw them at foes. This could be uh, used for backstabbing. It was okay. Now, Corrupted Blade's very good. The damage output is uh, great if they have no uh, physical armor. You can put some nasty debuffs on for two turns, which is really great for Sibyl. It's another tool in the tool shed. And you uh, definitely want many tools as possible, especially if you uh, went on the rooted uh, portion of her uh, companion quest. Now, Cloak and Dagger. This one will teleport you uh, across the field, especially behind foes, so you can still set up uh, backstab attacks. Also use this for retreating, so if things get bad for you, go ahead and pop this sucker and uh, retreat. So this way you get near Loge and she'll heal you up nicely. I use this quite a bit too. Now, uh, Gagor is uh, pretty uh, good. You can use this to uh, silence a foe. Now, once in a while, I use this for magical damage. That's all I really did. It's resisted by magical armor. That's the uh, downside. Upside is, yeah, that debuff is really nice to uh, have. Yeah, so Bill has some nice uh, trees. So let me uh, go ahead and do the next one. Rupture, uh, yeah, this one. This one's really good. So what happens is if you uh, do this one and their physical armor's uh, gone, you can do piercing damage. This one's really uh, powerful to use. Really helpful, so when foes move away from you because you're backstabbing them, they'll uh, take extra damage. So they're in a situation, get backstabbed, 
or uh, run away, get damage. Now, uh, this one's good, uh, mortal uh, blow. If a foe gets down 20% uh, vitality under it, you can instantly kill him. So Bill really wrecks people up. That's why I have uh, Scoundrel at 5 using it. And let me uh, tell you, I used this once or twice, and it was really fun. And it also uh, does backstab damage too, so uh, keep this in mind. You could do over 800 with it. Now, Saul uh, Tooth Knife is really great. You could hit that. And of course, if uh, no armor, yeah, I should say more uh, no physical armor, yet yeah, you'll uh, put a nice deep buff on it, which is really uh, perfect, especially for Sabil. So let me see what else is next. There's two more I want to point out. Flesh Sacrifice gives you extra action point. You take a little bit of uh, damage, but here's the thing. It's uh, great, though. It sets up Sabil for a nice uh, run of the old backstab. You couple that with Adrenaline, and Sabil seriously goes to uh, town. Other than that, Sabil has some great uh, skills in her uh, spell books, so uh, keep that in mind. And one more thing I always love is her uh, Shackle ability. That's her own ability. She gets to... Uh, Knock out debuffs on certain allies, really helpful. If certain situation is not going your way and you need someone that uh, has debuff that you want to go away ASAP, pop this for Seville. So for the uh, next portion of the video, I'm going to demonstrate her uh, combat abilities. And here we go on this part. Now we're uh, facing the uh, Shadow Prince. So what we're going to do is go ahead, set up a nice backstab attack. Yep. We're going uh, to do it. So let's uh, set this up nicely. And there you uh, go. So we took out some armor. Got a backstab critical hit. It's nice. So we're going to pop adrenaline and then uh, flesh sacrifice so she has a nice full bar and go crazy on the uh, shadow prince. So what we're going to do right now is just do our basic attacks. Yeah, we're going to try and weaken them. We're going to attempt to knock them down, which by the way is knocked down now. It's the way our allies could destroy them. And he's uh, halfway health gone. The fight went like th that afterwards it was uh, my other characters finish him off. Now this guy right here is finished. We've been uh, doing the same thing, knocking him down. And now we're going to go ahead and just uh, do that. Yep, we finished the foe off and that's how Sabil rolls. We're going to talk about the final portion of the video which is potions and uh, grenades since it is very important. Now this is the last section of this uh, video before I give my final advice about the four characters and the party build setup which is potions. Healing potions and grenades, certain ones. So when you uh, came from Fort Joy, you should learn the minor healing potion, which is a certain mushroom and an empty potion bottle. I'm going to give everybody a secret right now on how to make the giant healing potions. You're going to be using those to uh, get through some encounters to cheese. So you combine two minor healing potions to make a medium healing potion. After uh, that, you combine two medium healing potions to make a regular healing potion, or they could just call it a healing potion. So once you have a healing potion, you combine two healing potions to make a huge healing potion. So after uh, you uh, combine huge ones, you combine two of those huge ones to make a giant one. You're asking why you're showing all this. Well, remember that soul uh, mate uh, summon ability that Ifan has against the undead? Well, you pop that on tough ones, and there are some tough ones you have to face. Once you pop that, just drink up. Yeah, you'll waste the potion, but you're going to turn a battle that could last many rounds into one or two rounds, depending on how you uh, do. Now, another thing I'm showing right now is a potion of strong will. This will give you immunity to uh, terrify and a whole bunch of other things. Really good to have on you. So all you need is an empty potion bottle plus uh, any fire essence, which is great. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about the grenades next. Now, I decided to skip ahead towards the grenades. So there are two grenades. You definitely want a love grenade. That is a four millimeter radius set charm for uh, two rounds, which is very good. My maggot grenades does is uh, set charm for uh, four turns in an eight mile radius, which is really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and show everybody the uh, recipe for those. Now, first of all, the uh, love grenades, you're going to need an empty uh, perfume bottle and any honey. Honey is very common, by the way at Reaper's Coast, so collect much of those as possible. Really simple to uh, get. Now the other one you uh, definitely want to save is a whole bunch of those uh, Jar of Mind maggots. Yeah, don't sell them like I did, like a few of them. That was a big mistake. So in order to make a Mind Maggot grenade, you need a, a Jar of Mind maggots, very important, and an empty grenade canister like I show you right now. This way you make a powerful, uh, charming item. Seriously, it is really uh, powerful. 
Those uh, grenades got me uh, through the not only the Clay Sentry fight, also the one Ethereal Lady. So you definitely want to save those for the hardest encounters. Just make sure you uh, get rid of their magical armor to make things a lot more easier. And that's it for the uh, potions, grenades, and uh, healing stuff. So I'm going to give my final advice. Here's some final tips I'm going to give to everyone. Save often, save early. If an area is too tough for you, come back to it later on. You'll be much more uh, stronger. You, when facing the undead, use healing uh, spells. Or if you're using the uh, soulmate uh, skill from Ifan, yeah, drink up those potions. Know uh, what foes you're going to face. And if at times, just think outside the box. Other than that, just enjoy uh, the Reaper's Coast to Nameless Islet. It's a wonderful uh, part of the uh, game. Well, this is it for my Divinity Original Sin 2 Defend Edition Reaper's Coast to the Nameless Island Party Build video. This is Lorfent signing off. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day or night. Please stay safe. Please subscribe to my channel for more Divinity Original Sin 2 content like this. If you do like what you see, check out the upper right hand corner videos for my suggestion on the lower right hand corner for a video suggestion from YouTube. Thank you for watching everyone and have a wonderful day or night.